sounds a little better. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Everyone, just bear with me uh, while Facebook does this thing and builds up. Ooh, excuse me, my audience. Uh, go ahead and, you know, invite some people and share. Watch party. Things like that. While wow, Facebook is uh, getting my my audience built up here, so I just want to take this time. Get on in front of the camera. Get my marker. Get my my writing utensils here together. Okay. Okay. So. Let me make sure my thing is straight. I feel like I'm standing like in the camera, completely in the camera. Okay. <clears throat> so, welcome to the Rucker Report today. I am Miss Bethany Rucker, and I am going to teach you some financial education and literacy. I want you to understand that you have the power to build wealth, generational wealth from scratch. Deuteronomy 8.18 said, God gives us the power to build wealth. He didn't say he was going to give it to you, that it was going to fall out of the sky and that you wouldn't have to do any work or it wouldn't come at a cost. So <clears throat> you have to be willing to give up some things in order to execute and accomplish some things. So I'm going to talk to you today about the 369 transformation. And in the 369 transformation, we, we are going to talk about two objectives, four challenges that are hindering you from being able to uh, reach that goal of building wealth for your family. and But the great news is I will share three solutions with you uh, by the end that can show you just how you can overcome those objectives as well as those challenges. So let's get started. So hopefully, let me slide my, my thing over just a little bit. Okay, so <clears throat> the two objectives. So at the very, very top, we have two objectives that we have to meet. So these two objectives, you have what you call A, your current lifestyle, and B, your future lifestyle. A, your current lifestyle is paid for by your labor. That means when you get up and go to work every day, you, you know, you're grinding and you <clears throat> are exchanging your time for money. That is your current lifestyle. Everything that you do, you only earn money based on you working. So my question that I would like to ask you is, if you don't work, where would your money come from? If the only means that you have for earning a paycheck and a living is by you getting up and going to work physically and trading your time for labor, then where will your money come from when you don't work? Whether it's by force, whether it's not by your choice, whether it's a life situation that happens that maybe you have to stay home to take care of a sick family member like your mom or your dad or a sister or they have a short time to live and you have to take off from work and you don't have the family leave act or you don't have enough vacation where will your paycheck come from so the second uh, objective is your future lifestyle which is paid for by investments
So <clears throat> your future lifestyle, that means during your working years, while you have all of your health, while you have all of your mind, your sanity, you have options, you have opportunity, you have to build for your retirement. You have to build wealth for generations to come. And if you are not able to acquire enough cash flow during your working years, you're not going to have enough money to sustain you during your retirement years. So let me show you how the government has set you up for failure because they got you on the 40-40-40 plan. That means you work 40 hours a week for 40 years of your life to only get 40% of your income. If you currently are not able to live off of 100%, of what you make now, then what makes you think you're going to be able to live off of only 40% when you retire? So, <clears throat> your future lifestyle, the government says Social Security has the answer, right? So, <clears throat> I'll just put SSI for short and pensions. If you have been following my page, I posted an article on Social Security on how they're going to run out of money. They're not going to have enough money for us when we hit our retirement, but even then, it's not enough money for anybody to live off of when they get to retirement. So why is that so many of us are still bought into this system that is set up, that has set us up for failure? And if you don't believe me, just start Googling Social Security. Social Security is not going to be around. Social Security does not work. It's not a good strategy. And if you have elderly parents like I have, that are living off Social Security, which technically they're not living, they're surviving, but you already should know and see that it's not going to be enough. So if Social Security is not a solution and it's not going to be enough and your pension is not enough, then where are you going to acquire the extra cash flow, the extra investments that you need to in order to sustain your lifestyle in your retirement years? So. I'm very excited because my mentors have taught me, have educated me financially on how to get 13% of, or better return on my money. And there are several opportunities and options where you can get double digit rated returns on your money. But you can't do that when you don't know and understand how to make money, how to multiply money, and how to manage money. So we're going to get into the four challenges. There are four challenges, I'm not saying four, four challenges that get into your way on a daily and monthly basis that is hindering you from being able to build wealth. So right here, we're gonna fill in four challenges. So the very first thing that attacks your money every time you get paid before you get a chance to spend it is inflation, right? Because every time you go to the gas pump right now, you're starting to see the price increases. The hikes at the gas pump is getting closer to summer. The gas prices always go up. Airfare, airplane prices go up. Um, your groceries and grocery prices go up. Your daycare goes up. All these things are constantly increasing, but your wages are flat. They're staying exactly the same. So therefore, if I took a $20 bill, right, and I put it under my pillow back in 1955, even though I wasn't born in 1955, but let's just say that I put a $20 bill under my pillow in 1955, and that same $20 bill is still under my pillow today in 2019. That $20 in 1955 would buy me a whole lot more than the $20 that I currently own today. So it's still the same 20. It didn't lose its it didn't lose its authenticity, but what it did lose was its value over time. So your money is constantly losing value over time if you don't have your money working for you without you having to work for it. So the second biggest challenge that you have is taxes, which take the first third of your income. So it's not about how much money do you make. It's about how much of your money can you keep because the government is always going to take their third off the top as long as you are an employee that earns a W-2. The more you make, the more that they take. Even when you get a pay raise, you don't ever see the raise because inflation sucks it right up and you never get to get out of that rat race of once you fall behind, then you're constantly struggling, struggling to catch up. But the system is rigged and designed for you not to catch up because if you're working for free from January to April, because the government takes a third of your money off the top, that means they're getting their money up front and you basically work for them from January to April. And then you work for the banks from May to 
December because what you don't have cash flow wise, you have to go out and finance. So interest is the penalty you pay in advance for something you cannot afford. So once you have to go out and finance a purchase, now you're working just to pay bills. You're working just to keep a roof over your head. You're working just to pay your mortgage. You're working just to keep food and shelter and your lights on. Because now you're having to, you know, every time you get paid, money in, money out. Every time you get paid, money in, money out. So you go to work, you trade your time, your labor for those dollars. And then this month's bills go right back. Uh, your money goes right back out the window for this month's bills. So if <clears throat> any of this is sounding familiar, you know, just raise your hand, just nod your head, just wow. Like she is really talking to me. It's okay. Don't be embarrassed because we all have been there at one point in time. But when you know better and you learn better, you're supposed to implement and do better. So if you have never been taught financial principles and strategies called income shifting, here's an opportunity for you to take advantage of assessing what you have going on and taking action towards being financially free, taking action towards eliminating your debt, taking action towards lowering your taxes, taking action towards minimizing your expenses and creating multiple streams of income with your own money. Because I cannot tell you how excited I am to number one, have learned to learned how to earn a double digit rated return on my money. But that in essence has translated to me earning a 300% return on my investment of starting my business. So number three, the next biggest challenge is your debt right? So let's see, what kind of debt do you have? Do you have student loan debt? Do you have a car note debt? Do you have a mortgage? Do you have medical bills? Do you have credit cards? See, uh, many of us have all these things and we have no strategy, no plan to get us out of this financial hurricane that we are in. We have been, you know, dealing with this year in and year out, year in and year out, and yet we have not made any progress towards becoming debt-free. We have not made any progress towards getting better credit. We have not made any progress towards investing for our future and getting our money working for us because we simply do not know how. How are we going to do it? But we don't even want to admit to ourselves that I got a financial problem. I need some help because you know why? Finances is subject specific, right? If you got migraine headaches, right, and your head is just pounding and you're trying to figure out what's wrong with you and you don't know because you typically don't have migraines, would you go to the podiatrist, which is the foot doctor, to have him examine you to see why you have these migraine headaches going? You absolutely would not. So if you've never been taught about money, if you've never been taught how to make and manage and multiply your money, if you've never been taught financial principles and strategies about wealth and how to build wealth and how to get your money to grow without you working for it, it's okay. It's not your fault. But rich is an option and broke is a choice. So if you remain in the same condition at which you in, it is totally your fault because you chose to do that versus changing your mindset and seeking out a mentor that can help you turn $10 investment into a $600 million. You have refused to seek out a mentor that can show you strategies to help you keep your money by lowering your taxes. You have refused to reach out and get a mentor that can show you how to leverage the same income that you make on your job because your job leverages you. So the next thing that we're going to have, that takes the final third of your, um, of your money is big business, right? Oh, I guess I should say it's the third. So big business. So we, what do we have coming up? Mother's Day, right? And does every store and every um, department and media and marketing strategy, when you turn on the TV, it's Mother's Day. You want to treat your mom. You want to appreciate your mom. You want to respect and show homage to your mom. But they mark everything up like 35%, right? So those same flowers that you buy before Mother's Day goes down to 50% off after Mother's Day, right? The same thing that you buy before Mother's Day, you can get it for pennies on a dollar after Mother's Day. So my point is there's not a holiday that is not celebrated every single month. We just left Easter. We're rolling into Mother's Day. Then we'll have Father's Day. Then we'll have 4th of July, um, back to school in August, Labor Day in September, Halloween in October, 
you know, Thanksgiving and Black Friday and Cyber Monday and Small Business Saturday. So you have all these things every month that's geared towards taking your money. That's not including birthdays, anniversaries, Domestic Violence Month, Lupus Awareness Month, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, Mental Health and Wellness Month. So we haven't even gotten into that. Those are just the major holidays. But there's uh, something going on every month that is geared towards taking your money. That means that it is shifting the money away from you, away from your household, out of your household, somewhere else, so that you never see a dime of your hard-earned money that you get up and you go to work for faithfully, diligently. You can uh, drive through rush hour traffic. You drive through horrible traffic. You drive through congestion every single day just to earn that dollar. So why not learn how to keep it? So <clears throat> the three solutions that we have to all of these four challenges, right? Three solutions. There are three solutions. And in these three solutions, I like to talk about, you know, it reminds me of the cash flow quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. So we start off in the W-2 column, right? W-2 column, I'm an employee. I work for IBM or I work for Tesla or I work for Google or I work for, you know, some big time corporation. I got a good job. I'm making good money, right? I got a good, nice house and I got a nice family with a nice car. So, but every time I go to work, my taxes are 28 to 33%. Every time I get paid, every two weeks, the government takes a third of my money without my permission off the top. So that means I work, I'm taxed, and I spend as a W-2. I work, I am taxed, and then I spend. So everybody else is getting paid. When do you actually get paid? Because your money, you actually never see it, right? So we got the three categories here under cash flow management. To take you from negative cash flow to positive cash flow, three things have to happen. Number one, I have to lower my taxes. So we're gonna put M-I-N for minimize taxes. Number two, I have to minimize my debt. And by the way, debt does stand for don't even buy that. And number three, I have to minimize my expenses. Now, what are expenses? Expenses is like your internet, your cell phone bill, your utilities, your garbage or your water, your sewer and your trash. Your expenses will be some of your kids' activities, um, sporting events. It's something that never has an end to it. Debt you can pay off and expense you cannot. So expense is going to reoccur like residual bills, you should have residual checks to cover those residual bills. So once I'm able to show you how just by adding entrepreneurship to your journey of being an employee, because we are thankful and grateful for our jobs, but we do know that wages and wealth are not synonymous and we can never build wealth, build a legacy as long as we have a job. We cannot pass that job down to our children or our grandchildren, or our great-grandchildren. So basically, if all you have is a job, you are not working for your last name. You are working for someone else's. And the goal and the objective is to work harder for your last name than you do for somebody else. So we're going to move you into entrepreneurship as a 1099 business owner. And with a business owner, once you add that entrepreneurship to your job, you go from 30 to 33% taxes to 18 to 23%. Woo! Talk about like due to a one-time Ric Flair. Woo! Man, I don't know about you, but that is amazing, right? So we're going to put the 18 to 23% right there. As a business owner, just by acquiring and adding a business, I go from 30 to 33% down to 18 to 23%. That is amazing. So the way it works as a business owner is my business works, my business spends, and at the very end, my business is taxed. So I get to work all year long. I get to keep all my money, and I don't have to pay no taxes on it until I actually go to file my taxes. Now, what makes you think... <laughs> Does that make you go, hmm, why does the government trust a business owner or it gives incentives to a business owner, but to the employee that gets up and go to work every day, I'm getting taxed out the gate a third of my money. So I'm working for free from January to April. Did you ever think about that? 
Anything the government wants to incentivize, they want to encourage you to do, they give a tax deduction for it. So if you understand that in order to qualify for business deductions and tax deductions, that you need a business. Okay, so under business income, we're going to show you once we get you a business, now we can help you generate business income. All right, there are three categories under <clears throat> business income. So you are going to invest $35 a month for your business, which will cover you having a first class website. It will come with financial strategy tools such as debt elimination calculator, such as cash flow strategies, such as your cash flow manager to track all those great business deductions. And it's also going to come with credit repair so that you can maintain, improve, and carry excellent credit so you're not penalized for something you can't afford and you won't have to continue to pay for things four, five, six times more than the cost because when you have better credit, then you get better opportunities, right? Right. So the next step is you're going to learn how to write off your lifestyle, right? Off lifestyle. And then the third thing is because if you, how many of you all have a subscription to Netflix, right? So the way Netflix works is you sign up one time, you get your subscription, you can watch unlimited amount of movies as long as you pay your subscription every month. Well, that's what a business that runs on autopilot. You get paid off of work you did one time. A person signs up and each month that they pay that, that, that subscription, you earn residual income three, five, and up to eight dollars. So here is the residual income of three, five, or eight dollars for work you did one time and off the work that you do as a team. Talk about amazing, right? But over here as an employee, you only get paid one time off the work you do one time. You miss work that day, you don't get paid. So the very last category, which is you become an investor. Because this is what we're striving to, to become as investors. That's how you build wealth. That's how you build multiple streams of income. And that is where you are taxed the least amount of money. So you're taxed at less than 15%. So that simply means, so the employee that has the good job, if you simply learn how to max out your 401k, your pension, your 403b, or whatever it is that your job offers you, you're able to be taxed less by simply investing more. Get the heck out of here. Who would have thought that, right? So over here, where I may not have any investments going on as an employee, I'm taxed 30 to 33%. If I simply start investing in my 401k, 403b, pitching, whatever it is that my job has, I can go down to being taxed less than 15%. Because over here, my money works. I reinvest that money. And then I make more money because when I invest in something that earns me dividends or income, I can have that dividend or income check go right back into my investment. That is, sir, when you have your uh, get your money to start having babies and your money begins to start working harder for you, then you have to actually work for it. And it will supersede what you make on your job depending on how strategic, focused and consistent you are with that investing. So over here. We got the three categories as an investor. Number one, we have capital gains. <clears throat> and number two, we have dividends. And for final and number three, we have invest in yourself because you are your biggest and best recruit and investment. Oh. So this here is what we call 369 total transformation because in three days, we can take you from just being a W-2 to a business owner. And we teach you how to adjust your W-4, which will put any anywhere from $200 to $1,000 back into your paycheck. As 
going and adding a business. And then we take you from being just a business owner. And in six weeks, we will have you um, <clears throat> learning how to invest your money so that when you get to the nine month mark, you have it will have reduced your debt as well as your expenses and increased your cash flow where now you are investing a decent amount of money so that your money can begin to work for you. So I'm not sure who invited you on this video blog. I'm not sure how you came in contact with the record report today. I'm not sure how you or what you may be learning for the first time on this video blog. But the one thing I am sure is it is by divine design and not by sheer accident that somebody thought enough of you to invite you to listen to this information. Somebody thought enough of you to invite you to hear and see this 369 beautiful transformation presentation. Somebody thought enough of you because they want to see you win financially. They want to see you on the right side of capitalism. They want to see you debt free. Because just imagine, close your eyes and visualize one time the current money that you make, the current salary that you make, if you had no debt, no mortgage, no car note, no credit cards, no student loans, no medical bills, how much different would your life be? How many more things could you do if you wasn't boggled down being a slave and chained to credit card, to debt, to poverty, to student loans? We have a solution. I just gave you three solutions on how you can go from negative cash flow to positive cash flow. So if you're watching this live, please type in the comments, city and state where you are tuning in from because I want to know just how far this broadcast is reaching. If you're watching the replay, make sure you hashtag replay. So I want 10 people who are ready to say yes to financial freedom, who are ready to say yes to being debt free, who are ready to say yes to having better credit, who are ready to say yes to debt be gone and student loans? Who are ready to say, yes, I want my money working harder for me than I work for it because something has got to work and it just can't only be me. So this is the Ruck Report coming to you on this Transparency Tell It Like It Is Tuesday. I truly am sincerely excited because I want to, our goal not I want to. Our goal, and it will happen because this is Money Making May, we are going to help 100 families start this journey to becoming financially free. So if you need to reach me, you can contact me via inbox or you can call me directly at 314-301-9354. And remember to get your money up because you absolutely can and you most absolutely deserve to do just that. All right, roll call. Hey, Miss Tamisha, thank you for tuning in. Queen Lisa, thank you for tuning in. Ronald Washington, thank you for tuning in. Arthur Williams, thank you for tuning in. Terrell Jones, thank you for tuning in. Missouri Berry, thank you for tuning in. David, thank you for tuning in. Miss Crystal, I appreciate you joining in. Queen Corey, thank you for tuning in. Please, you guys, share out. Show some love. Sharon is Karen. Hey, Miss Gloria and Willie. Thank you so much, Derek, for tuning in all the way from Florida. Miss Patton all the way from Birmingham. Miss Nolens, Sharice, and Shahidville up in Georgia. Thank you guys for tuning in to this presentation.